JavaScript is everywhere, whether it's powering websites, emails, or even applications. But here's the thing, attackers love JavaScript as much as developers, turning simple scripts into a maze of gibberish to slip past your defenses. But what if you could unravel this confusion in minutes to stop threats in their tracks? Well, on today's episode, we're going to demystify JavaScript obfuscation, how these attackers hide these malicious codes, as well as practical techniques and skills to decode these messages. Welcome to Learn with Hack the Box, a unique YouTube series focused on fast tracking your career in either offensive or defensive cybersecurity. This is actually our 12th episode in the series, so please consider subscribing so you don't miss the upcoming episodes. So first off, let's talk about what JavaScript actually is and why someone would want to obfuscate it. Most websites nowadays utilize JavaScript to perform their functions. While HTML is used to determine the website's main fields and parameters, and CSS is used to determine its design, JavaScript is used to perform its functions necessary to run the website. So to take it a step further, obfuscation is a technique used to make code a little bit less human readable. Now, this does have a little bit of a hit towards performance. However, from a technical point of view, it all works the same. All right, so here we are, we're in our web browser. I went ahead and navigated to obfuscator.io. Now this is an open source tool. It's a free to use kind of a thing. You do not have to use this. This is just one of the more commonly used tools to do this. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and just go through here. We have a space where it has some general example code. You can put your stuff in here. Uh, what this does, it'll take our five line code and it'll turn it into this crazy amalgamation mess here. We have all this stuff that's just all over the place. A bunch of uh, worthless data is kind of hides what we're trying to hide. Uh, now what happens here is if we actually scroll down, we will see these transformers or these modifiers that are added to our strings, our code. Now what this does, it adds things like uh, variable names, dead code, it kind of shuffles things around, but it just makes it a lot harder to human read. Now this doesn't actually change the function of the code. Think of it as it's just renaming, it's uh, encapsulating certain things. It, it's not changing the actual source code. So while it may add a little bit of uh, a performance uh, degradation, just know that it keeps the code uh, acting as it would normally. Uh, now what we do have here is we do have this crazy mess. Uh, we could take this here and we can go ahead and plug it into our next free tool. This is deobfuscate.io. Now this one is, you're gonna kind of see here, I'm gonna plug this in. We'll ignore that for a second. Um, but it takes our uh, crazy, um, amalgamation mess and it makes it into one single line. This is called minification. And we're actually using this tool to see something known as a prettifier or a beautifier. Now what this does, it takes our stuff, it makes it just a lot easier to read. Um, when we, uh, oh, that's my mouse there, uh, hit deobfuscate and it makes it just hierarchical, uh, makes it a lot easier to read. Now, if we actually go through our code here, we can actually see that 80% uh, of what we're looking for is already like right here. Uh, so it, it, it's visible, it's just a little bit of fluff added in there. This is kind of the, the analysis part of all of this. Um, and now <laughs> you may saw the pop-up, but if you put the, um, the uh, obfuscator.io code in there, sometimes they can find those transformers. They're the uh, same stuff all over the internet. Um, they can go through and actually just do a quick uh, one for one swap. Basically works it backwards. It's been reverse engineered. They figured it out. Um, so if they use that obfuscator.io, you might be able to do a quick kill with this tool. Uh, and then lastly, a, an honorable mention would be the Unpacker by Matthew FL. This is just another one of those tools that are used in the utility where you can throw it in there and it takes it into that beautifier. It makes it just a little bit more human readable. Now imagine if this wasn't like a harmless demo. This could be a malicious payload hiding things like URLs or malicious redirects or even malware commands. You know, it is extremely important for these security professionals to be able to decipher this information as quick as possible because faster response time is just faster remediation. But that was JavaScript deobfuscation in under five minutes. No frills, no fluff, just very practical techniques you can work on, uh, just kind of get you moving and grooving. Now there is a lot more you can dig into, more theory and concept, uh, more of that's going to be listed down below in the Hack the Box Academy's uh, JavaScript deobfuscation, as well as getting into some of these Sherlock to take advantage of some of this technology. So you can kind of get hands-on experience and kind of apply that theory to uh, practice. Now, if you're looking for a way to secure your Active Directory environment, you're going to watch this video right here. We discuss the importance of securing a Windows environment. Thank you so much for watching. Consider liking, subscribing, and check out the Hack the Box's certified Active Directory pen testing expert, the top tier offering in Hack the Box's certifications. Thank you and have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.